Hey up guys, <laughs> and welcome. Greetings from the Camp Film Festival. I'm here joined by a man who needs no introduction. It is, of course, the Oscar expert. Why did you just introduce me if you said I don't need an introduction? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was an oxymoronic sentence, wasn't it? Yeah, well, a man who needs an introduction. More than oxymoronic, maybe just moronic. Maybe just... <laughs> <laughs> Off to a great start. Uh, here with the Oscar expert, we're here in Cannes. We are being roomies uh, for the past few weeks, and we're here to give you a quick review on the newest film from Jessica Hausner called Club Zero. The plot of Club Zero is set in a fancy private school mostly for wealthy kids and a new teacher shows up, a nutrition teacher played by Mia Bashakovska called Miss Novak who has a small group of kids join her class and she tries to teach them about mindfulness and something called conscious eating which is a practice designed to minimize the amount of food you're eating, supposedly it's better for the body, better for the planet, and yeah, the practice gets a little bit more intense, a bit more full on, uh, with consequences for the kids and their parents, and yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, what did you make of Club Zero? I am super in the middle on Club Zero. I was pretty intrigued with the offbeat style and the colorful sets and costumes. Um, I thought the score was really great mm. too. It was like this weird, I don't know, there was like weird bongo shit and like, I don't know, I just liked how odd it was. Yeah. And there was something to the style with the slow zooms and the almost sci-fi look to it. Like yeah. it takes place in the present but with the colors and everything it almost looked like how Kubrick would do Clockwork Orange or yeah. like some sort of offbeat sci-fi thing. Also with the slow zooms and some of the camera moves, I, I did feel like a Kubrick influence from it. It kind of looks like I will, but just slightly off. So yeah. yeah, so I like the style a lot. And the subject is super intriguing, mm. um, but it just feels like with all the ideas that Jessica Hosner is juggling here, the whole thing felt like an allegory for nothing. Right, kind of. okay, yeah. Um, I, I can kind of see where you're coming from with with what you're saying there because the film is tackling a lot like all the kids in Miss Novak's class I always I kind of felt were like representative of the the topics that she and her co-writer Geraldine uh, Bajar were trying to address so like one kid represents like consumerism one kid represents bad diets uh, one that represents eating disorders and then there's like one who's like a woke activist and then there's like one that's like representative of the social expectations and pressures like in order to like maintain body image and stuff like that. So yeah, there is, well, for lack of a better term, uh, there's a lot to digest here. Uh, maybe it bites off a little more than it can chew, pun maybe very much intended. Leaves you feel starving for, start, start for more maybe. <laughs> Look, we can know? go all day with these, can't we? <laughs> I do appreciate a satire, but I guess the problem with Club Zero is while the ideas are interesting, um, it doesn't feel particularly focused in on any one thing. When I came away from it and had more time to think about it, I knew I was entertained and I found it interesting, but I'm not quite sure what the film was trying to say overall. I think we have a lot of similar positives as well, because I also appreciate the score. It was like a lot of really tight strings and drums and it was a little repetitive, but it worked. And so it sort of gave me like, uh, religious culty vibes, which is pretty much what the, the club is. It's you know essentially an allegory for an end of the a doomsday type um, cult who believe they're going to be the ones that are left after humanity has gorged themselves to death. What do you think of like the performances and stuff? Well, everybody's kind of doing a deadpan thing. Yeah. So I thought the performances were pretty good. Yeah. It's one of those movies where the performances are really just fitting into like a certain director's style, I guess a Very little bit kind of like how Wes Anderson. Anderson does it. Um, Mia Wachikowska is probably the standout. I like the way in which she's menacing in a very like, I am very pleasant way. Um, <laughs> very zen. But yeah, I thought everybody was pretty solid. Yeah, I um, actually found some of the kids to be some of the better performers in this. Uh, Florence Baker who played Ragnar and um, mm -hmm. Luke Barker, who played Fred, like, they were the standouts for me. For me, with Mia Wachikowska, I kind of didn't enjoy what she was bringing to the role, but um, as she is kind of the cult leader of it, I 
I was kind of expecting a little more charisma. I don't know, I'd, uh, if this is going to be someone I'm going to follow to the end of the earth and follow their ways. I guess I was just sort of lacking that Charles Manson charisma of like, uh, why would I follow you? But that's, that was just me. I've yeah, like, I kind of get that. In thinking about what exactly this movie is commenting on, I have like, it has things that it reminds me of about our world. One of them is like the activist mindset of like, we have to change the world, we have to save the climate, we have to, you know, change our habits and our eating in order to get there. But this movie feels like it's almost making fun of that by taking it to the logical extreme. It also seems like it's satirizing the language that like, woke leftists use. Yeah. And with the whole like teacher indoctrinating their students thing, it's almost like a DeSantis Florida nightmare thing. And even if it is a commentary on like activism or whatever, like, like, you know, go for it. You can, ch I, I'm okay with, you know, I think that anything can be satirized, mm. like just as long as it's clever or interesting, but I don't think that it leads anywhere that is interesting. Like, I just don't yeah. really know what to do with this movie. Like, there's like one scene where it involves vomit, and that's all I'm gonna say. And it's, it's kind of feels like shock value for the sake of it for me. I'm not I think it does. I'm not sure if it really added anything to it, because it did not. It was just a little bit muddled there. Let's get to them three questions then, bud. So, first of all, would you watch it again? No. No? Just one time watch? No, yeah. I don't think so. This was a can experience. I don't think I liked it enough. That's fair. Go Although on. it's like, it's not the worst movie I didn't like that I would watch again, I guess. Because, <laughs> I don't know, there's some things about it that are sort of interesting. Fair play. And um, would you recommend this to anyone? I have a hard time re recommending it to anyone because even the people who it seems like it's really for, like here yeah. I can, a lot of people are not really digging it. Not maybe, yeah, it's not gelling, is it? Who would I recommend it for? I guess... If you're, if you like a movie with some satirical ideas in it, then yeah, uh, give it a go. It's one of those films where it looks great, it's beautifully shot, um, the atmosphere is intriguing, so I do think there is something, uh, some value to watching it. I mean, if you like an off-kilter style, like, yeah. there's definitely an interesting style going on here. Maybe her other films are more worth watching. Yeah. Like, I did like the Bill slow Joe. zooms a lot. I liked yeah. how a lot of the scenes played out in just long zooms. Um, yeah. What's going to get out of 10? I'm so down the middle on it. I guess I guess that puts me at a 5 out of 10. Yeah, uh, I'm somewhere like 6.5 out of 10. So, uh, good qualities, just little overstuffed with ideas, I think, and not enough focus. But yeah, but I still enjoyed it, so probably more so than you. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Okay, so. uh, none of us hate it. A lot of people are hating it, I gotta yeah, say. Yeah, I ran into a lot of people who are like, fuck that movie. Really didn't like it. It's like, Worst movie of the festival for some people. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Oscar Expert. Guys, if you haven't done so already, you gotta go over to the Oscar Experts channel, check them out, all his socials, channel link in below. You need to be following uh, Oscar Expert and Brother Bro. They are doing wonderful work. You're doing the Lord's work. The Lord's work. Yeah. Well, you're welcome so much, Luke. And, uh, you know, if you are, if you're not subscribed to Luke's channel, you have you have to do that. You have to click on the button, and you have to look at and, and you have to do what I say, just like how you would do as Miss Novak says. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. healthy. It's yeah. Because my audience is fully They're falling into line. Fully I'm actually gonna let you throw the popcorn today, but you gotta give it some welly. Like to throw the popcorn. Yeah, it's fun. It's gathered like some shit from the floor. From yeah, the last times just... you've been throwing it. You don't want to eat that. Uh, I mean, I don't, maybe the ones at the bottom. Are <laughs> no, they're really not. Hey, okay. thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, for more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Airfield. This is the Oxford, Oscar expert, and we'll see you next time. Uh, uh, you no, weren't very good at sports, were you? <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> we always Throw, pick last the gym. Throwing it stop. That was don't, surprising. Don't bring me. You gotta really toss it. You're yeah. giving me PTSD. <laughs>